Hello, everybody on King Television. This is Eric Smith, and I'm so excited for today's Next Generation broadcast because we have three men of God that I know have been praying. They've been seeking the Lord on your behalf because we truly believe today is going to be a day of victory, a day of breakthrough. I believe it's going to be a day of salvation, a day of miracles for everyone that gets a chance to watch this broadcast because we know the Bible tells us that, that, that the Word does not return void, but it will accomplish what it's sent forth to do. And we believe today, as people, as these men of God bring forth the message, I believe you're going to have hearts ready to receive, ears ready to hear, and I believe Good seed is going to fall on good ground, and we're going to see God do amazing things today. I always like to encourage people as they come on the air. You know, the Bible always speaks to us. We're supposed to prefer our brother and sister above ourselves. I want you to be thinking of some people right now that you know might be struggling physically. It might be through a prolonged disease. could be cancer. could be diabetes. Uh, maybe they're battling uh, maybe some kind of fibromyalgia. Maybe it's a maybe it's a head uh, issue, migraine headaches. You know what? There is nothing too difficult for our God. The Bible says that and proves that. And listen, I want to encourage you. Please reach out to some people you know that needs a physical touch from the Lord, that, that just needs to be delivered and set free. Maybe pe people battling bondages, maybe addictions of some sort. Again, nothing. Nothing's too possible for God. Let's give the Holy Spirit a chance today to touch people. And here's how you can do it. You invite people to watch this broadcast. And as, and as people hear these messages, I just believe we're going to see God do amazing things. And guess what? You have a part in salvation. You have a part in breakthroughs. You're not going to be, I'm not asking you to preach the gospel. This three men of God got that covered. But I am going to ask you to use your faith for someone else and watch what God will do today. So please reach out to as many people as you can. Send a link the way you're watching King Television. And let's all agree we're going to see God touch people in a powerful, powerful way. Thank you so much for doing that. Our first speaker today is another wonderful man of God. This is Pastor C.J. McBride. He's a senior pastor of Abiding Love Church in Foley, Alabama, also president and CEO of C.J. McBride Ministries. I uh, recently put a book out called Hidden Treasures and Earth and Vessels. Great book. Pastor C.J., thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share with the worldwide audience what God's doing with your ministry, sir. Well, pastor Eric, we're seeing people born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. People are getting in Bible college. They're getting trained and equipped. You know, it's harvest time, and we know it's harvest time. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit late to get ready, but you can still. Hopefully, everybody's ready. And we're just seeing harvest come in, uh, spending a lot of stuff this summer, uh, traveling to other meetings and uh, preaching at them, and some just going, sitting and learning. Uh, but just watching the ministry grow and explode, and we're so privileged and honored to be a part of what Pastor John and Rachel are doing. Actually, they're going to be at our church in just a couple of weeks on August the 7th, ministering the Word. So, we're excited about them coming. It's always a great time to have them around. But just thank you so much for the, this vision that they had and casting the vision and running with it. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor CJ, for what you're doing for the kingdom. And I know you're going 100 miles an hour there and fully appreciate you very much, sir. Our second speaker today is Pastor Terry Dross. He's a senior pastor of Peckful Assembly God based in, based in Blakely, Pennsylvania. Pastor Terry, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share with the Worldwide Audits what God's doing with your ministry as well. Thank you so much, Pastor Eric. It's a real privilege and an honor to be uh, on this broadcast today with you all. And uh, God's doing some great things here in the Northeast. Uh, we're about two hours from New York City, two hours from Philadelphia. But man, the Spirit of God has really been moving. And I don't just say that. We've, we've actually come off uh, two straight weeks of uh, tent revival meetings with evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth with Faith Alive. And every night, I mean, that tent was just about packed and with souls, people being saved, and we baptized uh, quite a number of people. Uh, the church has grown because of uh, that, that outreach efforts. But if it's okay, I'd like to read just one quick testimony of healing that I think would be an encouragement. One lady, and this is literally out of the meeting, and said, I want to share with you a huge testimony about my husband's aunt who had brain cancer. Uh, she was in the tent revival every single night, which she was right on the front row. I didn't know the lady. Uh, myself personally, but I know this girl writing this to us, and uh, she's a member here. She said she had a bad knee and a shoulder from an accident. She needed surgery. When she walked across the ramp in the healing line, she said the pain from her knee and her shoulder vanished and never returned since. Well, since she went to her oncologist, the cancer doctor today, they can't explain it, but they said all of the scans tell now that, that she is completely cancer-free. So I said, thank you, Jesus, right? That's that's what we're about, signs, wonders, miracles, reaching the lost. And, and uh, so God's really been moving. We, we are opening up a third location uh, up in another county. And, and uh, so we're really busy this summer uh, preparing for the harvest. But uh, just to say, we're just incredibly humbled by what the Holy Spirit is doing in this corner of the world.
Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Terry. Appreciate you, what you're doing for the kingdom there. And uh, as you know, we both love Brother Ted very, very much. It's just amazing to see the way God uses that man of God. Appreciate you very much, sir. Our third speaker today and final speaker was going to be a Pastor Emilio Laredo. He's a senior pastor of Faith Family Church in Hallettsville, Texas. Also handles the Spanish pastor pastorate there in Victoria, Texas, that big mega church. Pastor Emilio, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please share the word what Arthur God's doing with your ministry as well. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure to be back again. We got busy a little bit over there with a, a lot of transition and all that in, in ministry. But praise the Lord. Uh, I want to report now that Hallisville, we, we finally handed over to uh, a new pastor. So I am glad that I'm just pastoring one, <laughs> one church right now, which uh, we're getting ready to, uh, hopefully by December, we're getting ready to move our Spanish services from 2 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning, that it will be simultaneous with the English service. So we're excited about that. And of course, we are preparing ourselves to launch a lot of, a lot of uh, connect groups, uh, uh, cell groups. And, and we're excited. We are seeing, I, I, I appreciate the previous pastor sharing what the Lord is doing, because that's exactly what we're seeing. We've seen a lot of miracles every day, just this Sunday. People call us while well, they pray for me uh, after the service. You know, the Lord just cured me of this, and I just praise the Lord for that. So we're excited. The Lord is at work. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Emilio, for what you're doing for the kingdom there in Texas. I know it's pretty warm down there, but I know you do amazing work. Thank you so much for your heart, for people, and what God's called you to accomplish. Appreciate you very much. Now, before I have Pastor CJ begin to minister, I want to ask you one more time, if you haven't reached out to some people that you know that need, need to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, that need miracles from the Lord, you just heard these great testimonies of people being healed, delivered, set free. Listen, please, please, let's not, let's not let this opportunity go by the wayside. Please reach out to maybe four or five, six people if you can send a quick text message to them send a message through social media just a quick link and watch what god will do and i believe you know we're gonna have millions watching right now it wouldn't be cruel if we had like 25 or 30 million people watching because you reached out to two or three people and that's how quickly this this audience can grow so lose your faith for somebody and let's god let's let's watch god do amazing things on people's behalf thanks so much for doing it again our first speaker coming out of the gate this is pastor cj mcbride coming to us from abiding love church in foley alabama Pastor CJ, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, bring forth the message God's given you today Could for you King TV. Could you a podcast that we do? Well, thank again, uh, uh, Pastor Eric, for being here. And thank uh, Pastor John and Rachel for the privilege and opportunity. Today, I want to talk some about faith and maybe some hindrances to faith and how the Holy Spirit takes the word of truth and the spirit of truth. Because, you know, we say truth. A lot of translations says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of reality. And what that means is the spirit of reality. It means he challenges our truths that are based upon our perception or some kind of uh, thing that we've seen or we've learned and brings real truth or re brings real realities of what's really real. And when it comes to faith, you have to have the Holy Spirit because he brings the spirit of faith through the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He opens you know. the word of God to the spirit of faith. And then when that we speak that out, we speak that out with the authority based on the truth of God's word. And it goes to work for us. But in, in, I'm going to read a few scriptures out of John 17. To, I mean, out of Luke 17 today. And I want you to see some of these hindrances to faith. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say this first, that Jesus said, pray for your enemies and for those that despitefully use you. I want you to know Jesus didn't say that for them. He said that for you, because the biggest hindrance to faith is unforgiveness. So that's why I said you pray for them. You release them. Let me tell you, faith versus feelings. We're not talking about you feeling like you forgave them or feeling like you're over going to look. The offense are hurt. But remember, vengeance is God. God. That's God's fight. That's not yours. Yours is the fight of faith. It's not with people. It's not with your emotions That's against good. people or your thoughts and imaginations. You have to take those thoughts and bring them in obedience to the word of God. Say, so you know what? I'm going to forgive and walk in the number one law of God, the law of faith, uh, the law of love, because faith works by love. So one step out of love is one step out of God, and it's a step out of faith. And so as you see, as Jesus begins to teach in Luke 17, he talks about some different situations. So let me give you these real quick when it comes to the hindrances of faith. Number one, the biggest hindrance to faith is unforgiveness. Number two is the lack of knowledge. 
Number three is I'm persuaded to act on your faith. That means I know what to do, but I'm not fully persuaded that I'm going to act on the word of God. I believe today that by hearing the word of God, that you can make all these adjustments. And if unforgiveness is curable, if lack of knowledge is curable by teaching, if we can get people motivated to step out on faith by believing the word of God through our testimonies and our triumphs of what God's done for us, then I believe that those things are curable. I believe there's absolutely nothing incurable. So we believe all those are curable. There's ways to cure all these. But it's interesting when Jesus is teaching this in John 17, verse 1, he said, Jesus said to his disciples, temptation, snare, strips, uh, and set to entice us to sin are sure to come. But woe to him by and whom they come. He said, they're going to come. There's going to be tests. There's going to be trials. There's going to be traps that people come. He said, but don't get your focus on them. Remember, we got to walk in love. We got to walk in forgiveness. Say, well, they set a trap. They said something wasn't true that was misleading or whatever. Those things are big, huge hindrances when we start getting ought. The Bible says, if you have ought against any, not ought against any, that ought shuts your faith down. So I want to encourage you as you're listening to this today. Listen, forgive those people, not because of you, of them, because of you. It's a hindrance to you receiving from God. And you don't have to feel that. You can say by faith. So uh, then faith, listen, feelings will never follow your faith. But faith, I mean, faith will follow. Faith, feelings will never present over and above your faith. But your faith will get your feelings in line with you, the faith. Amen. And so you can say, well, I don't feel like that. I don't think that we're not talking about that. We're talking about acts of faith where you say, I forgive them when there's no feeling that you're really still in your flesh. Your, your feelings are still hurt. Your mind's still having all these thoughts and imaginations that are ugly toward them. But you're saying by faith in God, I'm going to go ahead and forgive them. You know what will happen? All of a sudden, those feelings, as you begin to continue to say that, then the Holy Spirit, he grabs hold with you and he helps you to get that water untainted, that thing that's stopping the flow of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of faith in your life. He helps you to do that by getting you back in into love so that your faith works. Then the next thing he said here, it would be more profitable for him if a millstone or a milestone were hung around his neck, that's that's Jesus. He said, I'm going to take care of it. It's better for them. He said, they'd rather have rocks tied around their neck and thrown in the ocean for what they've done to you. So you have to understand, sometimes it looks like people are getting away with things, but the Bible says, fret not thyself against evildoers, for their grasp will soon be cut down. That That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to walk in the love of God so our faith continues to work. And so you say, well, well how, how does that happen? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, he comes to help your infirmities and my infirmities. And actually that word means, uh, it means incurable things. That means that you're not going to have to go through life with something that's never going to change. So, well, that's an incurable situation. It's never going to change. No, I'm telling you that by the spirit of faith today, there's nothing that's incurable. It also means a terminal disease. There's nothing that's terminal in your life. There's nothing that looks like death. If you'll begin to prophesy by faith to those things, forgive people. You're getting knowledge today. Then you're going to act on your faith. You say, no, there's nothing incurable. There's nothing terminal. There's not anything reoccurring. It's not going to keep happening over and over in my life. I'm picking up a spirit of faith today. And things are going to change. I'm not going to, another word for infirmities is crippling. I'm not going to go through life crippled by walking in unforgiveness or the lack of knowledge or the, uh, or being persuaded to act. I'm going to act on the word. I know what the word says. I believe what the word says. I'm going to act on the word of God. I'm going to forgive anyone because it's not worth me not being able to walk in faith and in the promises that God has for my life. And so when you begin to see that, then you realize, there's really no mountain. There's no challenge. There's no adversity that's too big or been there too long that it cannot move or cannot change. But you got to prophesy out of that. But you got to prophesy out of love and out of faith and knowing who you are and what you have in Christ. There's no valley. There's no place in your life that's been so low that God cannot bring you up. Actually, in Isaiah 61, 7, the scripture says, I'll give you double recompense for the lowest valley you've ever been in. I'm going to bring you twice as high as you've ever been. I'm trying to encourage you today, giving you some knowledge and say, you know what? 
It doesn't matter how long the mountain's been there. It doesn't matter how bad the valley's been, how low I've been. It doesn't matter how bad, how dark the cave or chaotic it's been. That cave has been a place of things changing and transforming. Things go get sometimes get chaotic and dark, but there's light that comes in the morning. Amen. So we believe that things are changing right now while we're speaking the word of God. That there's no, there is no, there's no pit too deep. Listen, the Holy Spirit is in pit business. He's the same one that went in the pit of the hell and, and raised Jesus. He's the same one that brought David out of the pit. He's the same one that brought Joseph out of the pit, Joseph out of prison. Joseph, come on, out of all the situations he was in and brought him right into the palace. You were not meant for the pit. You were not meant for prison to be locked down. I'm not talking about being in a physical prison. I'm talking about unforgiveness locks you in. It locks you in a place where you cannot get out because that's all you're thinking about is what they did or what they didn't do or ought to have done or ought not. As soon as you know that, you take that thought cap. You say, by faith, I forgive them. I'm going to walk away from this situation and let God deal with it. Amen. And so when you, I just made me think about Joseph. You know, when you look at Joseph, he was forsaken by his family. They threw him in a pit. He was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. And went to prison. When he was in prison, he he told the baker and, and the other guy told them their dream, but they forgot him. But after he was forsaken, falsely accused and forgotten, the favor of God came on Joseph and he stepped right out of those situations, right into the palace. Wonder what it'd have been like if Joseph would have felt been an unforgiveness toward his family, toward the false accusations. But for the person that's people that have forgotten him. But Joseph looked all past that. He kept continued to walk in across the dream. Because when these things come, they're coming at this really John 10 10. It's not people. The thief comes to steal your dream. But Jesus come to redeem your dream. The enemy come to kill your desire. But Jesus came to restore your desire and fire. The enemy came to destroy your destiny. But Jesus came to recreate your destiny. So you see, in all those in those situations with Joseph and all the patriarchs of old, from New Testament to Old Testament, they all faced these things. Jesus said, they're going to come. But he said, woe to them that do it. Don't get your focus on them. You let me take care of that. i got to hurry up here. I'm going to run out of time. He said, pay attention and always be on guard, looking out for one another. If your brother sins, misses the mark, solemnly tell him, uh, tell him and so and if he if he repent reprove him and he repents for his sin then forgive him if somebody does something that's in where you feel like it's in a relationship you know then there's nothing wrong with saying look i'm not a doormat if we're going to be in this relationship we're going to have to come to some conclusions when i do counseling with marriage people all the time i tell them you have unrealistic expectations that is not going to happen the man's not going to do that the woman's not going to do that what you need to do is sit down in every relationship and write down your expectations because if you don't the other person may be thinking they're being a great husband a great wife a great friend and you're thinking they're being a dirt bag and they don't even know what you expect so he says, reprove him. He says, if he repents or returns back to that relationship, to the pinnacle of that, he says, then you move on. So he's telling us if there's other people out there, you're not in relationship with, they're attacking you. He says, forgive them. Let me deal with them. He said, if it's somebody in the family, then sit down and talk to them. And, and I believe that God will restore that relationship, not one time, every time. And so when you see, when you see that, when you see that, it says, and even if he sins against you seven times, well, we know later Jesus changed it to 70 times seven. I don't believe anybody could sin against anybody at 590 or 490 times in a day. If they do, they deserve for you to kick them out of the other life. Get out of here and don't come back. Uh, but I, I want to get to this. And the Lord said, increase our faith. So it's interesting that that he this what he's the Lord's answer is said, if you had faith and trust and confidence in God, even so small, like a grain of mustard. Now, I've, I've preached this wrong, and I've heard pre preach this wrong, and you can look at any translation you can. It does not say the size of a mustard seed. It does not say that. It says like a mustard seed. Like a mustard seed means there's great potential in the seed, but the seed works by love. 
Amen. It works by forgiveness. It works by knowledge. You have to act on the word. If you got a seed and you don't use the seed, it just stays the same size. But if you will sow the seed, then the seed has power to reproduce after itself. And that's what your faith is. Your faith is a seed. But if you don't use your faith like the grain of a mustard seed, he didn't say, he doesn't mean that. That's what so many people take that. That is not what the scripture says. It says like, small, like a grain of mustard seed. You could say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up or this mulberry was sycamine tree is what it says most of the time. And when you realize what a sycamine tree is and what it represents, a sycamine tree represents death. So there's nothing that's terminal in your life. There's nothing that's terminable in your life if you'll prophesy to it. It means bitter. Things don't have to be bitter. Even in the Old Testament, God told Moses, take the take the tree, put it in the water. It'll make the water sweet. I'm telling you, if you'll take the work of what God did in Christ today and put it in your life, whatever's bitter is going to be bitter, better and it's going to be sweet. It means complicated. There's nothing too complicated in your life that God can't simplify it and make it better, but it's going to take faith. But you're going to, if there's unforgiveness in your heart today, you're going to have to let that go. You've got some knowledge today from just listening. You're going to have some great knowledge over the next 40 minutes. If you will listen, sit down, take notes, jot some things down, and then be persuaded to act on your faith. So let me give you this in closing. The first thing faith will move before it moves your mouth, before it changes your sick of mind situation or anything, it'll have to move your mouth. You'll have to say to this mountain, you'll have to say to this challenge, you'll have to say to this valley, to this pit, to this cave, to this situation, that I believe with God, there's nothing impossible. I believe with God, all things are possible. I just was with Pastor Jesse and Kathy Duplantis for about three days. And Pastor Jesse kept saying to me, is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? So he just wrote a new book, Give God a Job. Give God a job. Give God something to do in your life. There's nothing too hard for God. If it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's financial, it doesn't matter today. I'm going to pray for you. If you've never been born again, if you prayed this simple prayer, you're in the kingdom of God. Then as you listen to these other men uh, uh, preach the word of God, listen, you'll get some knowledge. Then act, say the word, speak the word only. Don't speak the situation. Don't, don't talk to God about the mountain. Don't talk to him about the valley or the pit. Or you talk to that situation about your God. That's your faith and you releasing your faith and what you believe to be in the word of God. That's the first act of faith. So you can say, now I'm fully persuaded to act on the word. I've got some knowledge. I'm forgiving people. I'm moving on and I'm moving up. Let me pray for you right now. Father, just say this to me. Father, I believe today the words spoken to me are true. I believe that you love me and I love you. And it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. What matters is what's happening inside right now. You recreate me, making me a brand new creation in kind in species that's never existed before, that I can walk in the love of God. I can walk by faith and not by sight because I'm a new creation. I'm a creation of faith that was created by that, by the love of God. And now the love of God controls me and I believe in my heart. I'm born again. I'm a new creation in Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. I confess that today. And any for any kind of sickness or illness this in my body, my body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sickness, you have no right in me. I'm not asking God to heal me. I'm taking advantage of what God's already done. He's already healed me. I receive my healing today. I receive restoration today. I'm, my dream is being redeemed. My destiny is being restored. It's being recreated right now. I believe I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor CJ. Powerful, powerful message. Now, listen, uh, he prayed several prayers there. And one of those prayers, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, again, the greatest prayer you could ever pray is something as Jesus, come into my life, wash me, cleanse me, make me whole, make me new. If you say something similar to that, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if we believe in our heart, we confess our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Guess what? You're born again. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. Thank God we don't have to you know, pray 13 of the same prayers or 12 of this prayer or put sackcloth and ashes on anymore. We're under a new covenant. What Jesus is 
has done for us on that cross. When he died and shed his blood for us, my sins were forgiven, your sins were forgiven by saying a prayer just like that. It's just that simple. So if you prayed that prayer, please call the number on your screen right now. I'll tell King TV, I just came to Christ as Pastor CJ was ministering. We want to hear from you. We love hearing your stories. We love to talk with you. We want to talk about next steps as well. And I also believe as Pastor CJ was praying, I believe many would be in touch in your body. So I encourage you to check yourself. If you had pain in your back or your neck or your legs, begin to do something you couldn't do before because I believe you're going to notice the pain's gone. And if it is gone, which I believe it is, call that number on your screen and give God praise. You know, Brother Shemak used to say it this way. He loved to, he loved to give the devil a mental hernia. And what he meant by that was when, 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 when someone gets saved, the devil thought he had you on the way to hell. But guess what? If you pray that prayer today, you're on your way to heaven. And, and then the devil also put the sickness on you. Sometimes people mis mistakenly think that God is trying to teach him a lesson. And he's not doing that at all. The devil put sickness on you. But guess what? Jesus himself is the one that takes it off, as Pastor Terry mentioned earlier. Earlier in, in a testimony. Some have been healed of brain cancer. Guess what? That person that was healed of brain cancer, God's not a respected person. It's what he did for that person, he'll do for you as well. So listen, please call that number to your screen if, you're, if you have a miracle testimony. And listen, if you prayed the prayer to receive Christ as Savior, I want you to consider three more things. I want you to think about you need to find yourself a good full gospel church in the city of Turin. Now, this, this network's going into 182 nations of the world. We're talking covering literally the face of the earth. But listen, work hard to find a great full gospel church. Be in a church that coming Sunday. And listen, just tell that pastor, I got saved watching watching TV a few a few days ago. That pastor's going to put you around some great people. They're going to help you in the walk with God. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 10, 25, that we're supposed to forsake not the assembly ourselves. You know why? Because God knew there was strength in numbers. So get into a church. They're going to help you. Second, to get yourself a Bible. Now, you might say, oh, Brother Eric, I I wish I could get a Bible. I can't afford one. Listen, I have good news for you. You can download Bibles onto a tablet, to a phone, even to a computer. It won't cost you a penny. Read God's Word every day. Just as you would want to eat food every day, read God's Word every day. Watch how God will, God will guide and lead you, direct you, help you make good decisions as well by reading His Word. And the last but not least, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, we can cast our cares upon Him, our Heavenly Father, because He cares for us. Do those three things. Watch how God will transform your life. Thanks again, Pastor CJ. Appreciate you so much, sir. Our second speaker today is another one from out of God. This is Pastor Terry Dross. He's a senior pastor of Peckville Assembly of God and getting ready to launch, us, I think, a third campus now in the Pennsylvania area. He comes from Blakely, Pennsylvania. Pastor Terry, thanks so much for joining us today on King Television. If you would, please bring forth the message God's given you today for King TV. Thank you so much, Pastor Eric. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity. It's always an honor uh, to share the Word of God and, and to share the ministry uh, with you and the other great men that are on this uh, broadcast today. And so I actually just you know, like to open in a word of prayer uh, as you're watching. And we just kind of unite our hearts together before the Lord. God, I just uh, thank you. Lord, you know who's watching this. Uh, King TV un into 182 nations, Lord, as Pastor Eric stated, that's literally going all over the planet today, all over the globe, Lord, nearly 8 billion people, Lord. And so, God, you know exactly what we need exactly when we need it. So I pray, God, that you'll speak to people's hearts today, and I pray you'll change their lives, God. I pray for uh, the miraculous that only you can do, God, through uh, these vessels th this morning, Lord. And I ask your blessing, God, as I share this word that you laid on my heart today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you again. Thank you so much. I'm really humbled to be part of this uh, for these next few minutes. And I want to talk to you really about two different things. Um, really preparing ourselves for these end times that I believe we're now living in prophetically. Um, and, uh, and then also the call for revival that goes out. And so, you know, what is revival? Well, revival is, a, is, a, is kind of a swirling of spiritual activity where people are getting saved. Uh, there's signs, there's wonders, there's miracles taking place. Uh, and we see, uh, we've seen great revivals down through history. But uh, I want to share a, a couple thoughts on that uh, today. And if you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to uh, Matthew 24, the words of Jesus about the end times and how to prepare our hearts. And, and uh, the Bible says this in Matthew 24 and verse 3. It said, Later Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, and His disciples came to Him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. But the end won't follow immediately. Nation 
will go to war against nation and kingdom will rise up against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world. But all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray me and hate each other. So Jesus here, you know, when they asked him about the, the signs of the coming uh, of the end of the age, what will take place? What will that, what should we be looking for as we're preparing our hearts, you know, uh, in these last days? And, you know, depending on what your view is on the prophetic calendar, if I can say it like that, or clock, um, I think there's some pretty clear indicators here on where we're at uh, on that. And so, you know, he talks about there'll be uh, wars, uh, rumors of wars. You think of these wars that are taking place right now over in, you know, the Ukraine over there. And of course, Israel, I mean, the eyes of the world are on the nation of Israel. And of course, we bless Israel, you know, and you think of all that happening, uh, it really comes right in line with the words of Christ uh, that are, as we know, infallible in Matthew's gospel. And then he talks about that uh, there'll be a widespread deception. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> we watch the news and, you know, there used to be a day and age when you could watch news and say, okay, uh, this is what the truth is. Now we really don't know what the truth is uh, because of the deception that's out there and these agendas and whatnot. So that's why, thank God, we have the Word of God, right? And it gives us as the psalmist said, it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So if there's ever been a time that we need to be immersed fully in the, in the Scripture, in the words, especially in the Gospels and, and the words of Christ, it's the days in, that we're living in, in now. So he says this. He said there'll be this widespread deception. And, and so now recognizing these signs is crucial for believers. Um, and so he, t what does he tell us? He says, be sober, be uh, vigilant, and you know, know that your adversary, uh, the enemy, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now we don't have, that's not, that we're not have to be fearful of that, but we do have to be attentive to know where we're at, what we're doing, where we're going, and you know, how the Spirit of God, and, and we're people of the Spirit here, so how the Spirit of God is leading us to prepare our hearts for the end times and to heed the call of revival. And so, you know, these are, these are just a couple indicators that I want to share with you here uh, today as we look at these together. So, we, you know, recognizing the signs of the time. And then with that, we see in the words of Christ the urgency of revival, the need for revival. You know, I don't have to explain it too much, but there's a lot of churches especially in America and many other places that are just dead. They're, they're what, you know, what, what the apostle said that in the last days they would have a form of godliness, but denying the very power thereof. You know, I thank God for, uh, for uh, this ministry here with, with King uh, TV and Pastor Eric and, and the mighty uh, men that God has assembled. Uh, to this in women, you know, think about it. We, the one, we have many things in common, but the one thing we have in common, we all want to see the name of Jesus lifted up. We all want to see the moving of the Holy Spirit. We want to see souls saved. And, and I'll tell you, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, uh, in just a few moments when I close, I want to give you that opportunity to bring forth an invitation for you to receive Christ. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter who you've done it with, no matter how long you've done it, there really is a God in heaven that loves you. And He has an amazing blueprint for your life, for you to follow. But the only way you'll ever discover that truly is by humbling yourself before the Lord. So as we heed as men of God, as people of God, we heed the urgent call for revival. Um, you know, the scripture is very clear. Um, there's so many scriptures. I'll just share this one, uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Then, if my people, who are called by my name, will what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins, and I will heal and restore their land. That's to you, to me, to all of us. We've got to humble ourselves and say, God, 
a, a politician isn't going to solve these problems. You know, uh, 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 only God Himself can solve the problems that we're facing now. And the good news is still the good news. Now, when it comes to revival, I mean, I'm a student of revival. I know Pastor Eric is and, 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 and the other men here. Uh, we want to see God move. And, and I've been blessed, and, and I know you men have, and Pastor Eric, and we talked about that one time, uh, you know, like the Brownsville revival in the 90s. What a great, some people call it the, the Pensacola outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And what happened there? Well, over a million people came to faith in Christ in a church. I mean, it was really the longest running revival in American history within the confines of a church. And so, you know, I had been blessed to, to go there five times and take people with me and to experience that. I really, really get it when I, when I, when I read this and I read what Jesus is saying here when he's saying, listen, you know, when all these things take place, what? Earthquakes in diverse places, wars and rumors and wars, brother will rise up against brother, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. That is exactly what we are seeing. There's, that is the time where he says, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. What does that mean? That means that we have to be busy about the Father's business. This is not a time for us to be uh, asleep or aloof or, you know, hitting the snooze button. We have to be dialed in with the things of the Holy Spirit and saying, God, who is it that you're going to put in my path today? Who do you want me to talk to? Who am I to pray for? What do you want me to do? You know, so... Um, you know, again, Pensacola was an, was an incredible uh, game changer, I could just say personally for me, but I also know many, many other great uh, men of God uh, and, and people uh, of, of the Spirit. So, you know, what, what, is the, what is the benefit of revival in these last days? Well, uh, again, salvation, as Pastor Eric mentioned. You know, we, without salvation, you really, you have nothing. But with Christ, what did Paul say? I could do all things. So that's first step. And again, we'll, 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 if you haven't made that decision, if you haven't you know, gone there yet, let's solve that today. We'll do that in, in just a couple of minutes that we have left here this morning. But I want to say to you, um, salvation and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being filled, the Bible says, be filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. You know? And so that's, that's us. We're people of the fire, people, keepers of the fire. So you know, understand in these last days, there's, there are things that, yes, are happening. We saw on the news just over last weekend an attempted assassination of, of a president, a presidential candidate. You know, honestly, in my lifetime, I didn't think I'd ever live to see uh, such a thing. You know, I was just a couple years too young uh, when, this, uh, when that happened to President Kennedy. But the one news anchor said, you'll never forget where you were when that happened. Where were we? Well, it was Saturday night. We were, we were in prayer. We were preparing for Sunday service. And I don't know what it is. And thank God that, the, that President Trump is okay. But I just want to say, I don't know what it is about these things. But when they happen, when there is incidents and that sort of thing, people flock to God's house, right? That's what we do. And even people who don't know the Lord, they're like, look, I know that's not right. And I know there's something innate God has put in us that we need to be in the house of the Lord. We need to be in the Word of God. We need to be in an environment of worship and of, and of praise. And so we, we were blessed to have an evangelist with us at the church I pastor here on Sunday, uh, Evangelist Pat Schatzline out of the Fort Worth area. And he had just been on the, the, uh, the Daystar Network there. And anyway, Pat brought with him... <laughs> When he walked through my door Sunday morning, he said, God's going to do something here today, Pastor. I said, I feel that in my spirit. And, uh, and, and uh, he's brought the, uh, the jacket, uh, the blazer of the late evangelist Steve Hill from the Brownsville Revival. And he talked about, you know, who will take up this mantle? Who will be a lamp and who will be a light in a very dark world? You know, and he preached this message and he brought over a lantern and he said, and they put down the house lights. And he said, God has called us to be a light like a city on a hill. We're to be, again, busy about the Father's business and know the time, the times we're living in now, uh, the season that we're in. It's very important that we understand those things and we discern those things. And then what do we do with that? Well, we heed the call to revival again. So, so and then lastly, you know, it, it takes us into what I would call 
to live in our lives with an eternal perspective, to keep the things of eternity in mind. You know, this life, for what it is, we're only here. What does a man get? I mean, what do we get? 50, 60, 70 years, 80 years? I mean, the Bible says if you live 70, you're blessed, right? If you, anything above that, you're, you know, super blessed. My father is going to be 94 and he's still preaching the word, you know, and we're four generations here. And when I thank God for that, you know, but really whatever we get, we've got to make it count. And that's what, again, I love about a ministry like this, where this is going out to masses here. And what, what a great use of time to be able to come together and say, man, we're going to do whatever it takes to reach the lost. And if it's the last thing we do. But I want to read just briefly before we close here, uh, one last scripture to you. In 1 Thessalonians 5, again, talking about living with an eternal perspective because we're talking about end times and heeding the urgent call for revival. And Paul writes this to the church at Thessalonica. He says, now concerning how and when all this will happen, again, end times, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write you, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin. And there will be no escape but you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. So again, this is exactly what we're talking about. These, these indicators, thank God, Jesus lined them out for us and we can see them unfolding before our eyes. So really, in a way, it should encourage us to say, man, we don't have a lot of time, so we got to stay busy, right? And, uh, and so, and he says, you know, um, you know, so be on your guard, and not asleep like others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk, but let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith. Our brother did such a good job talking about the faith and how we got to operate and sow those seeds in faith and love and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us, that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other, build each other up, just as you are already doing. So understanding the times we live, again, should shift our focus from the here and now to eternity. And where will a man spend eternity? You know, and the choice really, those of you that are watching today, before we close in prayer, the choice is up to you. That's the thing God gives us, you know. I mean, um, the Bible says, choose you this day whom you will serve. You know, God didn't create us to be puppets on a string, but He said, you have a free will. I'm giving you the opportunity to spend your life how you want to spend it, to spend your days, your time, your resources, I want to tell you, I've been on both sides of it, and uh, it's a lot, it's a lot uh, better to live your life for the Lord and to spend your time advancing, doing whatever you can do, using your gifts, and we all have different ones, using your talents. Find a place to serve. Get plugged in in a local ministry somewhere that you can be a blessing to others. And so uh, I want to pray. And uh, I'm just about out of time here, but I want to pray with you today. And I, and I want to ask you if you'd bow your head uh, and, and just go ahead and humble your, your heart here for a minute today uh, with people that are watching. And, uh, you know, as we look to God, I just want to say to you, when you think about salvation, I think men have complicated salvation for years. But, you know, the Bible says very simple, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Some people call it the ABCs of salvation. You know, I've had the opportunity to share a gospel message in a, in a major league stadium and you only get three minutes, so you, re you really got to condense it, you know. And so I, I shared the one scripture that I believe would summarize the entire Bible would be John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's you. That's me. That what? He gave His only Son, that whosoever, that means whoever's watching this today, would believe in Him, believe in who? Believe in Christ. 
that they would be saved, that you would have eternal life. So I would say to you, A, B, C, A, admit that you need God. B, believe in your heart. And C, as my brother mentioned, confess with your mouth. And the Bible said, thou shalt be saved. So I'm just going to pray with you a closing prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I don't know everybody who's watching this, but you do. And you see our hearts, Lord. You know our thoughts, Lord. And God, today we come before you, and I'm going to ask you just to repeat this after me. Just say, Dear Jesus, today, while I was listening to your word, I realized of my need for you, my need for salvation. Today, Lord, I admit that I need you. Today, I start to believe that you are truly the Christ, the Son of God. And I confess you now, Lord, as Savior and Lord of my life. I'm sorry. Forgive me of my sins. Renew a right spirit within me. Help me to live all my days and to let my light shine for you. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. God, may God's richest blessing be yours. And thank you so much for the opportunity to share today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Terry. Just a wonderful message. Now, listen, please do what the man of God just told you to do. If you pray to prayer to receive Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior, it's the greatest prayer you can ever pray. Please do me a favor. Call that number at the bottom of the screen right now because King Television has people standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week to know what God has just done for you. Again, you know, the Bible says in Romans uh, 10, 13, that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now think about that. It doesn't make a difference if you're male or female. It doesn't make a difference what country you're from. Whosoever means that includes everyone. So if you prayed that prayer, guess what? You're born again. You're saved. You're now on your way to heaven. The Bible now says your name's written what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. That means we're all going to stand before God someday. All of us, all 8.2 billion people on this earth will stand before God someday and give an account for what we've done here on the earth. And we want to hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your rest. And that's what you're going to hear if you prayed that prayer. Here's something else God has done. God, if you prayed that prayer, has taken your sins. God's taken your sins and thrown them. The Bible says as far as the east is from the west, which simply means this, that God looks at you right now as if you've never sinned before. That's hard for our natural minds to think about because the devil starts trying to jump on that statement and say, oh, don't you remember what you did just weeks ago, months ago, even hours ago? In God's eyes, he does it. It's gone. It's wiped clean. It, 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 you're, the Bible says you're made now white as snow, pure as wool. So it's something to rejoice over. So please do me a favor. Call that number on your screen. Tell King TV, I just prayed a prayer receive Jesus Christ as, as your Savior. They're going to talk about some next steps with you as well. Thanks so much, Pastor Terry. Great, great message, sir. Our third and final speaker today is Pastor Emilio Laredo, Senior Pastor of Faith Family Church. Pastor Emilio, thanks so much for joining us today uh, on King Television. If you would, bring forth the message God's given you today for King TV. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's great two messages about, you know, living by faith and being ready for the return of the Lord. But today I want to talk to you. I know that, that uh, the Lord works in a specific way with each one of us. And I just want to speak to the audience, wherever you are, if you're going to see this again later on. I want you to know that God knows exactly who you are. He cares for you. He cares for your situation. And I want you to know that he has great plans for you. So I want to speak to you today that God knows you. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that he knew you. Personally, even before the foundation of the world, not only he knows you, but he loves you. It's tremendous to understand and to receive that even before he created the world, he knew Emilio and he loved Emilio. And he knew that Emilio was going to make a mess of his life. But even in that, he had plans. And that's what I want to tell you today. I want to encourage somebody. I, I, I kind of sense some people, you know, feeling that they're at the end of the rope. Uh, some people are feeling that uh, uh, they don't know which way to go, probably have to do with jobs, with finances. And there's other people in ministry that they feel that the ministry is not going anywhere. But I want you to know that the Lord knows exactly where you are. And it's not a mistake. It's not your problem. It's not something you did that you're going through this, but it's part of the training that the Lord is allowing you to go. See, God knows you personally and even before he formed the world not only knew you but he prepared a perfect 
plan for you. Listen, a perfect plan for you, for your life. Now, the thing is that this plan requires some training and some experiences. You know, I can talk a little bit about, about where do I came. I marvel every Sunday that I stand to tell people about the love of Jesus. It makes me, it makes me remember how the Lord took this little gangster, uh, you know, out of the mess and pull it out of there and uh, clean him up, bless him, and then gave him a word to tell the people about this forgiving, loving God. And that's the message that the Lord has put in my heart for you. God has a perfect plan for you. Even uh, oh, the experience that you had before you knew Christ, and even some of you right now need to come to that understanding. You're struggling. Is God for real? I remember that. Because at one time I used to say that if there was a devil, I was the devil. And, and God didn't exist. That's, that, was the, that was me. But I praise the Lord for his mercy and his love that one day he revealed to me that I was a sinner on my way to destruction. And she showed the love and the mercy of Christ, how God came to this earth, how God took the form of a person named Jesus. He went up to the cross, paid for all my sins and your sins, that if we believe in him, we would not die eternally but we will have eternal life. But also, that was part of his plan for the plan that he had for you on this earth. So uh, part of the mess that I went, it was part of my training. I tell you what, you know, I, yeah, I have heard bullets swing it by me, but I praise the Lord that I got to hear those bullets when I was telling somebody about the love of Christ, and they didn't make me run. It made me bolder to tell them that Jesus is real. And I was there making a fool of myself to tell them, God loves you. And that's what I want to tell you today. Now, listen, all this that the Lord did is because he planned to make you a powerful instrument for his plans. I was talking about, I was hearing my brother talking about the coming of Christ. You know what? The shining that powerful time where the church is going to shine and it's going to do great things for the Lord is coming. But all that the Lord did is because he planned for Jesus to be the head of the church and for you to be his body, for you to be part of his church. And he planned that his body was who Jesus is. We are the body of Christ on this earth. And the church is not you know, is not defeated. The church is in victory. You know what the Bible says about you? And 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 this is for somebody that probably you're right there in the borderline saying, is this for real or this is not for real? I remember that day that I say, I don't know if you're for real, God, but if you're for real, I ask you for forgiveness. I open the door of my heart and I receive you as my Savior. And I say, but if you are for real and you can change my future from going to hell to go to heaven, from a life of destruction and a mess to a life of blessing, if you can do this, and I ask you this, please take away the alcoholism. Take, the, take away these bad habits that I have. If you take them away, my life is yours. And, it, and tell you what, I have not regretted because I've been with the Lord now 52 years. And I'm still telling Jesus, God is real. Jesus is real. Jesus loves you. And he has plans, powerful plans for you. So I want to tell you what the Lord says about his church. He says, number one. The gates of hell will not prevail against her. That's you. Every believer, you are the church. And the Lord has anointed you. Something wonderful happened. You see, Jesus was with the disciples. Jesus was with the prophets. Jesus was with Elijah. Jesus was with all these people. But with us, he is not with us. He is in us. When you say, Jesus Christ, please forgive me of my sins. I invite you to be my Savior. The Holy Spirit comes and lives, comes inside of you. And you know what he says? I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as a matter of fact, in the words of Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And when you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit of God is the one that comes inside of you. The gates of hell 
cannot prevail against you. As a matter of fact, he said, there's, there's no weapon formed against you that can prevail. You are more than conqueror because you are the body of Christ, because you are the powerful church of Christ. And also he says that the works that he did, you will also do an even greater works. Understand this. Jesus is at, is at the right hand of the Father. The Father is in his throne. The Holy Spirit is here in you and in me doing the same works that Jesus started. 2,000 years ago, and he's taking his church to the victory that is fixing to come pretty soon. So I want to encourage you today. I wanted to teach a little bit about you being the church and the plan that the Lord has for us. It says, we are created. We were sent to announce the gospel with sincerity, not trying to trick anybody. That's why there's people like us. You know, that the Lord saved us, that we were no good. We were, you know, people didn't want to have nothing to do. You know, drug addicts, you know, drunkards, uh, prostitutes, you know, messed up people. The Lord pulled us out of there and put the love of Christ in us and save us. Now, I want to encourage you, brother. I want to encourage you, sister. But above all, I want to talk to you that you're in the border. Is this for real or is that for real? Right now, it used to say, God. I don't know if this is for real or not, but I give you the opportunity. I open the door of my heart and I receive Jesus as my Savior. And I tell you what, if you do that with all your heart, will, your life will never be the same. Remember, he has called you to be his body and to live in victory. As a matter of fact, he already provided everything that you need. And right now I'm going to pray real quick, but somebody needs healing. The Lord's already healed you while we were speaking the word. So receive that word right there where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. I thank you for dying for me. Now I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And I'm open for you to do your will in my life in Jesus' name. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to agreement, Father. Two or more agree on anything under heaven, Father. And we're doing this, this opportunity that you have given us to send the word. And in the name of Jesus, we bind sickness, disease. We bind blindness. We bind cancer. We got bind all these diseases. We command it to be gone from the body, Father. And we send the word and say, be healed. Right now, in the name of Jesus, people are feeling some heat in their body. People are feeling tingling. People are feeling something. You are being healed right now. Do something that you couldn't do before. Receive the healing that the Lord has prepared for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Emilio. What a powerful message you just shared. Now, listen. Please do me a favor. Call that number at the bottom of the screen right now. If you prayed a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, back in the book of Psalms, Psalms 51 10, the Bible says that David said it this way, create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. And if you prayed that prayer, guess what? That's exactly what God just did. He just cleaned a clean heart. He's taken the blood of Jesus and washed you clean. He's made you whole. He's made you new. You're now on your way to heaven. You now have your name written, what's called the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are going to rule and reign in heaven someday for eternity. As Pastor Terry was mentioning, we're on this earth for for just a period of time. We don't know exactly how many, maybe 70, 80. Maybe if you're fortunate, like you said, we might get even more than that. But guess what? Eternity is forever. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says it this way, that we've now, when you prayed that prayer, you've passed from death unto life, life eternal. So think about that. What a great prayer you just prayed. And maybe you prayed that prayer, maybe maybe you prayed that prayer 20 years ago and you heard Pastor Emilio share and you felt the Holy Spirit draw you back and you prayed a prayer a second time. Guess what? Jesus is still waiting there with arms wide open because he loves you. He died for you and he's got plans and purposes for you. Don't don't believe the devil and the lies the devil is trying to share. He said, you're just, you're an accident. You weren't supposed to be on the earth. That's not the case at all. God knew before the foundation earth that you were going to be on this earth at this very time. And I believe God's going to use you not just to get saved, which is most important, but I believe God's going to use you to save others. You might say, oh, Brother Eric, I, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be. Just share your testimony. Watch how that melts people's hearts when, they, when you talk about what God has brought you from, from where you were to where you are today. People will get saved, I promise you. And the Bible says there's no respect of persons. So listen, you can lay hands on the sick and you, you can see him recover as well. It's just that simple. The Bible says, as Pastor Amelia mentioned, wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he's in our midst. So guess what? He's in our midst right now. And if you're with somebody, he's in the midst as well with you. So please, 
Use your faith today. If you've got a miracle testimony, which I sense many of you do, please call the number on your screen. The books, the uh, uh, Luke 17 talks about where Jesus healed 10 lepers. But think about this. Only one of those lepers came back to give God praise. Now, that was an incurable disease. That was a death sentence. Jesus, out of his compassion, out of his love, healed 10 of them, but only one came back. Please be that one today that calls that number on the screen and says, King TV, guess what? I had pain in my in my, in my my lower back or maybe my knees or my feet. And guess what? The pain's gone. Maybe you, I encourage it. Maybe for those of you who've had tumors, check your tumor. I, I, I believe many of you are seeing tumors shrink or dissolve right now before your very eyes. So listen, God will do anything. We heard the testimony from Pastor Terry about the, the person being healed of brain cancer. I, incurable minus God. Don't doubt God. Don't discount God. God can do anything. So please call that number. Share your miracle testimony. Share your salvation experience. Team, I want to say thank you for your time today. I've been getting messages throughout this broadcast from King Television saying the lines have been full several times because people have been sharing their miracle testimonies, sharing their salvation experiences. So we just give God praise for what he's done. Uh, right now, the lines are full. So if you're trying to call in, don't be discouraged. Uh, I, I just encourage you. There's literally thousands of people coming to Christ through these messages right now. Many are sharing miracle testimonies. So if it is busy, call back like just maybe four or five minutes later because there'll be people standing by to talk to you, hear what God's done for you as well. For those of you who watch this network around regular basis, I just always encourage you, pray for Pastors John and Rachel. They're doing all they can to win souls around the world. And for those of you who watch King TV every single day, continue to put your hope, your trust, your faith in God. You know why? Because it cares for you. Until next time, this is Eric Smith.